So, Comedy Mothership. Let's check out the website. Let's see what the Comedy Mothership is about. Joe Rogan's new club that's going to be opening very, very soon. I think it's actually next weekend. It's opening up. Was it this weekend? I don't know. We're going to double check. Is it next weekend or this weekend? What did what I just say? I just checked it a minute ago. It doesn't matter. We'll figure it out. But yeah, Joe Rogan's new comedy store is opening up very, very soon in Austin, Texas. It's called Comedy Mothership. And the website has now been launched. It's now active. So you can see everything you need to see here. Let's get the fucking timer off of here because I'm an idiot. Please forgive me. And here's the site of it. Comedy Mothership, as you can see, in Austin, Texas. You can get tickets there. Let's click them and see where they go. Of course, Joe Rogan's Comedy Club. <laughs> the opening nights are all Joe Rogan. Rogan, 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 Rogan. No one else, just Rogan. I wonder what they're going to be doing for programming. Will they be having people do their own shows there? Like, I know um, Dan Chipley had a show in Flipping Comedy Store that he used to do, right? And other people have those kind of shows. Like, Bre Brendan's got shows, I think, in the Ice House, the same sort of thing. Joe Rogan, I mean, Brendan Shulman Friends. I wonder if Brendan, I wonder if Joe will have people come in do their own lineups. Or will he have it different? I don't know. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? Oh, is that is it true? Okay. Uh, Ricey Richie says Chris Rock. Where's Chris Rock performing? Is he performing like on Netflix or something? Oh, is that a Netflix show? Is that what he's doing now? Netflix show? Is it live? Yeah, I wish I could stream that. That'd be pretty cool to watch. Uh, but unfortunately, cannot do that. Um, but yeah, this is a show he's doing now. All the shows so far are on there. Okay, yeah, cool. Um, Eve said Kill Tony will be there. Yeah. So Kill Tony's going to be switching over there. But for the most part, if you want these other shows coming up from next week, Tuesday, they're opening. Here they are. Um, 8 p.m. Of course, there. Joe Rogan and Friends. Joe Rogan and Friends. I guess they'll, they'll reveal lineups later. Let's see how much tickets are. Anyway, opening price. How much are they? And I wonder who's doing the ticket, the ticketing. It's a, it's a site called Patron Technology. Show click. You're in a line. You're in a queue. 10 minutes to enter the queue. Wow. Joe Rogan's site's getting pummeled, isn't it? In terms of people getting tickets. Fuck. Amazing. Okay. Cool to see. Let's see how much the tickets are. Or if they're available, if they're free. Oh, so not free. I mean, if they're available to purchase. I'm assuming they'll be about $30, right? Maybe more? What are we saying? $30? $40. Oof. Sold. Okay, opening night tickets are completely sold out. That makes complete sense. $40. Shit, man. But to be fair, it's quite good value because you know they're going to be absolute murderers performing there, right? He's going to get all his friends there. Everyone's going to want to perform there. All the comedy store guys, everybody else included that respects Joe and likes him as a friend, they'll also be there. So it's going to be absolutely stacked lineup, but $40 is pretty pricey. Without having drinks, without chicken fingers, without a couple cocktails, without buying a fucking gram. Okay, people saying $40 is pretty good. Is it? Okay. So, so $40 is good. Um, Chris Mack is asking, is there a tree drunk minimum? I don't know. It, it, it doesn't say here. It just says comedy mothership lands. Sorry, mothership lands. Joe Rogan is opening up the club by bringing out some of the biggest names in comedy. It's your chance to see the first shows to be soon be historic club. Yeah, I don't see anything about um about two drink minimum to be fair, but I'm sure it'd probably be a thing. Is that a thing in Austin, or is that is that a thing for Austin, or is that a thing for all clubs for you guys in the states? That two drink minimum thing is that just Austin? Because I remember having it in LA when I went, or is that just the uh, particular areas? Clubs do that sometimes over here. Okay, cool. Box office info. Okay, there it is. The address of it. Seven days a week. Box office. You can go and open there. Age restrictions. 21 and over. Ticket resale. Tickets are supposed to being purchased on software. So resale will be cancelled. Okay, cool. I'm not sure they're going to judge that one. Let's go back on the menu. Check other things. They've got rooms. What's the rooms here? Oh, sorry. My bad. I had to click the wrong one. Let's do rooms. Is it the one? No, okay. Rooms again. Let's see. There's a room called Fat Man. What's fat man? Okay, I, I wonder what why I, I would like to get the look on the inside of what they actually look like. To be fair, that'd be pretty sick. They got another room called Little Boy. <laughs> when all those conservatives that get annoyed about the pizza thing, they're gonna get crazy if they find out about this, isn't it? A room called Little Boy. It's hilarious. Um, so that's not got opened yet, but I'm sure there's some reason to it. Um, Mitzi's Bar, which is obviously named after Mitzi Shaw, the founder of the comedy store, and Paulie Shaw's mum. Missy Bar and Lounge is a homage to, to uh, Mitzi Shaw. Missy is considered the godmother of stand-up comedy. Missy opened a comedy store in 1972. Missy scheduled the show, sold the tickets, cleaned the rooms, and gave encouragement to the talented and blunt direction to the comics that would become household names. It is a sin to encourage mediocre talent. That's a funny fucking line, because this could be applied to Brendan, isn't it, really, to be fair. It's a sin to encourage mediocre talent at his age. <laughs> if you're in the chat, 21 and over, I guess Crystalia won't be there, lols. Mitzi says, 
Mitzi kept a plaque on her desk which read, it's a sin to encourage mediocre talent. Mitzi judged every comedian on who auditioned for her on the charisma alone. If they had charisma, then she'd give them the stage time to create an act. She developed her own comics through what she called a graduated process of development. She selects um, a promising comic to be paid regular and the most coveted status among young comics then and now is a comic to store regular. It's now to be a comic to regular, sorry. The 35 years... For 35 years, Missy gave the comedy store everything she had from second chances to wayward comics to second and third mortgages to keep the operation running throughout the slow 1990s. The comedy store grew under the direction of, of from a 99 seat sublet on Sunset Boulevard to the free showroom palace it is today. To be fair, you say what you want about Joe Rogan, but he really is a comedy geek and an addict and a nerd for it. He may have got you i could you could probably you could argue that that brent no, sorry you could argue joe rogan's like good at stand-up in like a very me me methodical approach like he just willed his way into it he just went up as much as possible kept doing bits kept doing specials kept performing kept tweaking his act and eventually got good but whether or not he's like you know naturally talented at comedy or actually funny to the core is another thing to be argued but he definitely loves stand-up. Like he loves the craft of stand-up. He kind of obsesses and idolizes fucking Mitzi Shaw and keeps her never alive and her legacy, which is pretty cool to see. And keeps that kind of, her memory fresh in people's heads so people know what role she played in comedy and whatnot. Mitzi is an indelible, sorry, indemnable mark and legacy. Mitzi Shaw passed away in April 11, 2018 was an extraordinary businesswoman and decades ahead of her time who cultivated and celebrated her artistry of stand-up comedy. She was also a loving mother to a myriad of comedians who adored her. She leaves behind an indemnable mark and legacy and has helped change the face of comedy. We will miss her. So yeah, really nice tribute actually to Mitzi. That's really nice. Mitzi's. The amount of coke that's going to be sniffed and the amount of girls that are going to be finger banded at this bar and the amount of drinks that are going to be slobbered is going to be absolutely hilarious. But yeah, big up Joe for that one. And then what else you got? You got history here. Uh, the Ritz was built in 1929 by J.J. J. Hegman, who owned a several movie theaters in Austin, Texas. It was the first theater in Austin to be built specifically for talkies. The theater opened on 6th of Street on October 13th, 1929. It showed primarily first-run westerns, along with country music actors performed there before the movies. The theater closed in 1954. A tumultuous history. The theatre remained shuttered until 1970 when it opened for three years as an adult theatre. So it's got some illicit history, huh? In October 7, 1974, it was renovated and opened up its doors as a music venue, offering an eclectic mix of programming from classical to rock and including live theatre and movies. This was also short-lived and the club closed in 1975. Several other groups moved in over the years. The Centre Stage Theatre Group took over in 1977, closing off the balcony to make a second and separate theatre. Again, the venue didn't last long and and late 1970 saw a serious decline in theatre and including another stint at the porn exhibition. It's changed owners so many times in that 10 year period, isn't it? One, two, three, four, that like madness. In 1981, it began again as a punk rock club. Shows like the Black Flag were in, in, inaugurated at the punk era in, the 19, in May the 7th, 1982. The Misfits, Hus Husker Du, The Circle Jerks, The Dead Kennedys, Minor Threat, and other show there was in the audience for the hardcore and opened up the doors for an influx of punk rock for the Austin music scene. The violence inherent to punk rock shows eventually cost operation their liquor license, forcing another closure in 1982. The Rebirth is a beloved music venue. The managers also began reducing music from the Texas um, bands to heavy metal and very casually brought back the little bit of punk rock. The most famous shows played out in the Ritz are the 80s was the Red Hot Chili Peppers in November 23rd uh, show there 1986. The building has consistently been a music venue bar and pool hall since that time. On March 20th, 2007, the Alamo Drafthouse Cinema announced that they would be relocating their downtown cinema, which was the original theater opened in 1997 for the Ritz. It began construction on the April 1st, 2007 to revive the Ritz as a movie theater. The official guy opening was November the 2nd, 2007. Ritz Theater served as a flagship theater for the chain. In 2021, Alamo Draft House announced that they were firing, filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy due to the impact of COVID-19 pandemic. Oh, Joe took advantage of a COVID-19 business failing and he scooped it up. As part of the company's restructuring plans, they closed the Ritz Theatre. In 2022, the building was bought by comedian podcaster Joe Rogan. During the following year, the building was renovated under the design of Austin architect Richard Rice to turn it not into the com to turn it into the comedy mothership, a stand-up comedy nightclub destination, fulfilling a dream and vision Rogan had for providing a comedy community here in Austin that would draw comics from all around the world. Yo, it's pretty swaggy and pretty flexy that he was able to fucking buy a building, innit? No? 
Like that's that's what I would do. That's what if I was Rogan and I had Rogan's money, and eventually I will have fucking Rogan's money by God's will, right? That's what I would do. I build a fucking because I think his studio now is in essentially like a hangar. It's a fucking fucking hangar in the middle of nowhere in Austin, Texas, and it's huge. I'd buy a hangar and kit it out with loads of shit to do with my podcasting, and I'd also just buy a building to set up a club. In my experience, in my idea, I'd buy a fucking building to set up a nightclub and just book myself and book my friends and invite but get DJs on there and just do it like a passion project. Don't even make any money as long as it breaks even. I'm fine and just kind of run the night so I get to play it every fucking weekend. That would be absolutely amazing. You don't you don't have to travel too far. It's right around the corner. That's so cool, man. What an awesome thing to do. That's what you actually do to to have money. When you have money, like actually do the things you actually enjoy instead of just buying things. Buying things is fun. Don't get me wrong, but like actually enjoying yourself is this. Like being able to kind of just, you know, have the money to buy a fucking building, renovate it on the inside and do what you want. So I want to quickly check this architect and see what else they've done. Architect um, Richard Weiss. Let me see if he's got a, if, does he got a firm? Has he worked for himself? Let me quickly see this. Maybe we can see, the, maybe we might see the inside of it. Uh, okay, here we go. Uh, Richard Weiss, architect. He works for, okay, he's got his own architectural firm called Weiss. Let's see what he does here. I'm really curious because I, I would like to see what other work he's done um because you know rogan's taste in interior design is you know has something to be you know has a lot of uh room to grow so let's see what he's actually done previous work but let's see here richard weiss is a founded weiss architecture in 2003 after working as uh, both um, local and international design firms as lead designer for their advice group of commercial workplaces and hospitality and academics uh, academic and civil buildings his understanding of memorable place makings uh, provides clients with cost-effective solutions that transform their environment richard has also chaired and participated on various local state design boards and design juries he was a 2009 recipient of the aia AIA Young Architect Award. Okay. Educated in where? Rice University, Bachelor's of Architecture, University of Austin, Texas, Masters in Community and Regional Planning. Okay, cool. Let's see selected works. What has he done? What has he done here? Let's see what he's done previously to get an idea of his fucking works. Okay. So he did Alabama before. He's got residential here. He's got offices. Let's go for restaurant and cinema. Let's see what he's done for restaurant and cinema. Let's see what his vibes are for flipping architecture. I'd love to see this. So you've got Alamo Draft House, Kirby Lane. You've got the Comb, High Note, Tai Ken, uh, Glass House, Vince Young, and whatever that is. What? Vince Young Steakhouse, 400 Rabbit. Okay, let's go this. I like 400 Rabbit. 400 Rabbit is a nice name for a restaurant. I like that name. Is that a steak restaurant or something? Let's see. Let's see what it says here. 400 Rabbits, named after the 400 children of Maya Hul. Aztec mythology of goddess of the agave and plant fertility. Pond Rabbit is a cozy Aztec themed tequila bar. It features um, a tuft banquet seating of the soft velvet wall upholstery. Oh, I love this, man. A tequila bar called Pond Rabbit is really nice. Ooh, me liking the inside of this. It's, it's better than Bar Rescue shit anyway, so it looks really good. So it should be a nice way he would architect the other places then. Okay, I'm not mad at that. Let's see what he did for the Alamo. Alamo Draft House Cinema. What did he do there? Alamo. Oh, he did so many, innit? God damn. He did Brooklyn, Lanklin, Ritz. Okay, let's go for the Ritz one. Let's see what he did for the Ritz back in the day. This guy is really good. So it looks like Rogan hired a really good architect to sort it out. Um, Alamo Draft House is a Ritz movie theater located in Austin, Texas. The Ritz theater was originally built in 1929. Yeah, really nice, isn't it? I like how he do he does the interior in keeping with the building and the theme of what he's doing it with. It's not just like a particular style that he has. He kind of, you know, molds it around what they've got. Oh, look at that. The original picture of the layout and then what it looks like now. Very, very nice, man. Okay, this guy's pretty good. This guy's pretty good. We don't have an idea of what the inside of the thing is going to look like, to be fair. But I guess this is some good stuff. Um, let's, let's, look, let's go mixed use and development. It's on here. Okay, it's got Eastside River Cut. Okay, don't need that one. Let's maybe check out the office and retail. What's happening here? Boom, boom, boom. Baker School. E6 offices. Let's see this one. This is this looks pretty nice, isn't it? E6 offices is a this project was rehabilitated on a historic 1973 building. The owners purchased the existing bar and converted it into a corporate office space to consolidate several of the of several of the office locations under one roof. The office project is 6,707 square feet and houses over 70 employees. This is a lovely office, isn't it? Yeah, Austin is Austin might I think people say Austin living wise is boring, but I'm sorry, like you know, day to day. But you must you know, work must be nice, man. The offices are pretty nice, the houses look decent. I like it. Beams exposed here. I love it. Okay, cool. 
like I said, it fits the environment everything is doing. So I'm interested to see what it looks like on the inside. This comedy mothership. Do we have any pictures of it on the inside? I don't know if we have it. Let's see. What did, what 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 have they uploaded on their stories? Hopefully, it's not just nothing. Let's see if they've got something on their stories so we can see what it looks like on the inside or even the outside. Let's see. Anything? Nah. Just story uploads. Oh, okay, cool. But yeah, we'll get to see it in a minute. But yeah, comedy mothership opening very, 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 very soon.